Roger Smith. Come back. I like your cubby mask. No, no, no. We still, we still got seven minutes. Sorry. We still got seven minutes. I'm just standing up here like a fool. Sorry, guys. Oh, I'll see you, Como esta? I just want to take a minute. Uh, I don't know anybody is a member of ARP. I do it for the discounts. But in the ARP magazine this month, they had an article about uh, vitamin D. And I don't know if you read the article or if you are a member of ARP, but I recommend that you do. Because uh, it talks about as, our, as senior citizens, we're not getting nearly what we need for vitamin D. And they attribute vitamin D as one of the factors that inhibits coronavirus. So I would suggest that you talk to your physician and see if he thinks you're getting enough vitamin D in your diet. If not, you should get a supplement for it. That's my two cents for today. Thank you, Terry. And Terry also is getting the seasonal flu shot. It's supposed to decrease. I'm not going to tell that. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sean. We got five minutes. I'm, I'm not going to be Hey, How you doing, Chris? Hi, Nancy. Kicking butt. That's awesome. 
Yeah, my son's a quick beast in the weight room. Especially on the wall. He's pushing it. He's pushing everything Hey guys, we'll get started in just a couple minutes here, all right? Hey everyone. Better now, Tom. Hi, Mr. Gabe. Hello, Mr. Crockett, sir. Your Royal Majesty, Your Highness. Mr. Gabe, I'm looking forward to that type of respect when I'm president. Looks like a pretty good turnout at the meeting today. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorite photos right now because, like, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, what, what's going on here? Like, it's like, it's like cut over by, by the top. It's like, like, yeah, how'd you get it going that fast? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm a really huge fan of that photo. <laughs> Can you keep it on mute like almost at all? Us. Nice to see you. Barry, you can hear me, right? Give me a high sign. Yep. Barry, give me a high sign if you can hear me. Thank you. Thank you. If I'm not I'm crazy up. right now, I think it's time to get started. If you guys don't mind, if you could please rise. I'm going to call this meeting to order. It is 12.30 right on the dot. Wouldn't you believe it? And we're going to call this meeting to order. My name is Wes Crockett. I'm the lucky president of the Rotary Club of Schaumburg Hoffman Estates. Thank you for being here today. It's the 13th meeting, lucky 13th, of our Rotary Year, Friday, October 2nd. I think we have a great meeting. Today, we're going to have Mr. Glenn Garlic, our very own, speaking to us about uh, polio now, the World Polio Day. So thank Glenn for being here. But we're going to start today like we always do, with the Pledge of Allegiance. And would you mind, Christina Hosea, to meet us in the United States of America. America. Two. Three. 
Republic, it just stands, nation, under God, the liberty, the justice for some of the people who live here. If you don't mind, could I please have Gary Anderson, would you lead us in a four-way path in the way I interact with others? Personal accountability with courage and truth. I'll have the courage to tell the whole truth. I'll be going to the tell it. I'll be I'll be I'll be not some selfish advantage. I'll have an open heart. Open heart and open heart. Thank you. And Jack Lucas, would you mind please honoring us with an invocation? And I'll ask Jack if you don't mind joining us up here so the people at home can uh, hear your words. We can bow our heads. Dear God, we give thanks for this beautiful day. And for the guests that are with us, we ask a blessing on the Rotarians here and around the world and the projects that they're involved with. Bless us all. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. And I see we've got lighter attendance today. And you know what that is? Okay. That is okay because I appreciate every single one of you guys being here. So thank you. It's a nice Friday. It's a nice, small, crisp day. Thanks, everyone, for being all happy and healthy. Um, I, what's up? <laughs> I figured before we got started, uh, you know, we'll introduce guests first. And actually, I don't see any guests either online or in person. So we're not seeing any guests. Excuse me, Wes. Wes, I have a guest. I see people waving at each other, and I thought the waving was like, there's a guest, and I'm like, no, everyone is not, not a guest, so really sorry about that. Um, Listen, anyone I have a guest. Anyone a bit more anxiety this morning than they did in previous days, maybe check your Twitter, uh, something happened in the world today. Um, I, uh, I, I figured this was a uh, news event big enough for us to uh, address and talk about and just say. I believe uh, Alan Gate does have a guest <laughs> online. Oh, excuse me. Uh, can we please, can Alan, do you mind if I ask you to introduce your guest? Yes, I have a guest here. Hey, that, um, well, Rhonda Jensen is here as a guest since obviously she hasn't been meeting for three, four years. So everybody say hi to Rhonda Jensen. Is that how we treat guests? <laughs> That's how you know Alan loves us if he picks on us. I guess that's true, huh, Pat? <laughs> <clears throat> so I really must um, love you, Wes. It, it, a reminder me this morning, no matter how you feel about it, because I saw some pretty terrible reactions of glee on online, and I saw some uh, some reactions that just were not becoming of people. And I just wanted to talk about these. Things. If someone gets this around you, you wish them well. That's that's just the way it goes. And we wish our president well, and we don't want anything to happen. And um, it was a reminder today, to me at least, of my own. Uh, fallibility and that it doesn't matter if you are the most tested person on God's green earth like that group of people is it's all down to your own personal diligence and just uh, doing the right things you know uh, it can happen to you and no matter how well guarded you are so just wanted to talk about that um, I have what is in my opinion some bangers of stories today to share with you for our good news stories of the weekend. I'm not talking about bangers and mash. I'm talking about the millennial bangers, you know, good, good stories to share with everyone. So if you don't mind, and I think people online, you'll be able to see me in just a moment. Excellent. Let me bring this up here. So a couple of really good stories, and I got some engagement stuff to talk about too. But one thing that I thought was uh, really cool uh, let's go to this first. So uh, I think many of you know I grew up playing lacrosse, and lacrosse was one of those sports that was um, back in the day invented by Native American Indians and uh, French Canadian uh, Indians up in the way northeast of North America, um, the Iroquois Indians. And there is a world lacrosse tournament that goes on every year, and they're organizing the games for 2022 right now. Um, the Iroquois Nation has a team that is represented, and they uh, tried to be part of this uh, tournament, the World Across Games, but were denied by the, the body who puts on the tournament because they didn't, they weren't a sovereign nation. Well, there was a petition that was raised and said, we got to get these guys in there and raise the petition, 50,000 signatures or something like that. And this governmental body turned it over and said, you know, hey, we made a mistake, but there can only be eight teams in this tournament and all eight slots have already been filled. Well, the team representing the nation of Ireland said, you know what, that ain't right. This is our sport. Uh, it was. This is where it was originated, and we're gonna take our names out right now and give it to uh, the Iroquois Nation team. So I thought that was a pretty cool story. 
Second story, this is just a badass woman. And I love this story so much. And I'm going to read this story to you. Dr. Amanda House was getting ready to give birth, but she overheard that another expectant mother needed immediate attention because the baby was in distress. Knowing the on-call doctor was still on his way, she stepped in and delivered the baby. She then went back into her room and gave birth to her own baby. How incredible is that, right? So Dr. Hess, I thought was a badass. Yeah. Um, this one uh, is it, gonna touch you in the heart and I hope you people online can see this too. One of the amazing things about bionics and, and bionic limbs that we have right now is uh, the ability to restore senses to people that they didn't have a movement that they didn't have before. This is a Brazilian maestro, Joao Carlos uh, Martins. He used uh, bionic fingers because he had gotten into an accident. He couldn't use his fingers anymore. He had to play piano in 22 years. He put on these gloves that now allow him to play piano, and this was him playing and hearing himself for the first time. Oops. Of course, I had it queued up, and then that happened. <laughs> too incredible not to share so um yeah that one kind of got me a little bit and if that doesn't make you happy i don't know what will and i gotta say that i'm happy uh, it's time for happy talkers everyone uh because uh i am taking a little break next week i am going to the central uh pennsylvania where i did an internship when i was much younger uh at a 200 plus year old resort that was built during times of the revolutionary war it's beautiful it's called bedford springs resort we're going to stay there and watch the leaves turn for a couple of days so i'm five dollars happy for that is anyone else happy around there <laughs> Debbie schmidt what makes you happy He said he was happy to be going to Bedford Springs. Mm -hmm. um, and even though I did lose my dad in July, so thanks to all of you, you know who you are, who reached out in so many different ways. Um, and I'm happy because I'm sitting in a golf course. My daughter, Maya, you know, volleyball was canceled for the fall, so she picked up golf. So she'll be um, golfing with the varsity team in regionals. She's never golfed before, but she's obviously a natural. So um, very proud. Awesome. Thanks. Tom, what's up? Is the uh, Upper Iowa's um, Iron Peacock for the month, and there's him lifting weights. The little guy lifts a lot of weights and pushes a lot of people around. So I'm real proud of him. Nice, congratulations! Good job, Betty Goes. All right, uh, let's see. And I'm looking for anyone online. Is there anyone else in person? Jack, who's Lucas is happy. Jack, what do you got for us today? Well. Um, my son, um, who is really into triathlon, as you know, he walked to our club a number of years ago. Um, he uh, was in his first triathlon since the pandemic. Um, and it was a um, half Ironman in Idaho. And so uh, he said uh, he finished third in his uh, age group. But it was a terrible day. He said it was cold, rainy, and windy. <laughs> but he did. He did that well. Sorry, you're not so proud of anybody. Sounds like he's got the Lucas spirit. Nice. <laughs> That's wonderful. We'll, we'll go Pat Gronwall and then we'll go Holly Spath. Uh, go ahead, Pat. Another $5 this week for a Bears win last Sunday.
Mm -hmm. one out. I wanted to be part of this club, and I got your survey, filled it out, and I hope everybody had a chance to really think about what's really important and why we are here and why we do what we do. And I just, I love everybody in this club, our, our diversity and our energy and our philanthropic spirit really just touch me every week. So thank you, Ali. Thank you. And thank you for answering the survey. It's much appreciated. We got a lot of cool things and I'm going to talk about the data there in a little bit. Looking to see if we have anyone else uh, happy with us. Yep. Mary Jo Shepard. All right. Not quite as good as Holly and Little Bane, but um, I'm happy for these new cabbie pants that I got at Holly's party. They're, I know, they're, they're so comfortable that I think they may be my permanent pants this winter. That's what I'm talking about. Permanent pants. Everyone's got a good pair that's your favorite pants, right? Everyone does. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm going to consult uh, just for a moment with my agenda. Um, we've done happy dollars and it's time for some club business and announcements. I'm going to ask if anybody here has some club business and we have a couple, if you don't mind lining up and stepping right here so everybody uh, at home can see. Well, I guess the months are flying by. It's time to remind you all to mark your calendar again for our holiday party, December 4th, Friday night. And last year they gave us a certificate for a cocktail and hors d'oeuvre party for 25 people. Uh, just for giving them business over the years. And we thought we would use this. We tried to auction it at the Classic, but it didn't go. So we thought we would use this as a November social. So it will be on Thursday, November 12th. And it's a two hour cocktail or dirt party and from 6.30 to 8.30. So it's limited to 25. So the first 25 to sign up will be the ones that can come. The cost should be less than we do have to pay she said tax and tip but we don't usually pay tax so i'm figuring between five and ten dollars a person so next to nothing so sign up and gail will be sending out gail will be sending out a club runner and a registration thank you hi everybody hello rotarians come on give up. Give up. Hey. wake up um, I just wanted to share with you the event that I've been working on and a few of our other club members with our satellite club that's taking place on the 9th is going to be so amazing. We can't invite you all because we can't have a crowd, but I have to tell you the A-list that we invited, the people we were hoping to be there for the suicide prevention and awareness program it's, it's being conducted at the Rotary Healing Butterfly Garden at Children's Advocacy Center. Every single one of these people and agencies have accepted. The mayors are going to do a joint proclamation. We have uh, State Representative Michelle Musman. We have the CEO of Kenneth Young Center. We have District 211 Superintendent, District 54 Superintendent. It's going to be uh, an awareness and opportunities for prevention because all of these agencies that are there are involved in it. And it's also a fundraiser for the CAC. Our goal is to sell more bricks for them, hopefully with this wider audience and this, what we hope will be great distribution after the event of the video. We want to sell enough bricks that they can hire another therapist because they really, really need it. And who brought Mitch Levinson as a guest a couple of weeks ago. Was that person here? He was a guest when we did the uh, fishing well and the ACE presentation. He reached out to me. He wants uh, me to be involved in some podcasts that he's doing on uh, sales and marketing in this event. And he has also said that he would help us with the post marketing of this event. And because he, that's his business is marketing. So for us, the big thing is influence gathering and what we do with this video afterwards. And it should be just outstanding. So uh, we will also be planting 57 tulips representing the young people that have taken their lives uh, so far in the uh, statistical year. And uh, we'll be sharing it all with you when we have it all edited and get it back and hopefully you'll share it on your social media and we share the word. So thank, thank you. you. And 
I'd like to add to that too that um, the CEO of Wings that is coming, um, she was really happy to participate because her family's been touched by suicide too, and quite recently. And so, you know, breaking the stigma and increasing awareness is what this event is all about. So it happens to a lot more people than we know. Um, we're also next week drawing the uh, the mayor who is going to be at the at this event Ooh. is going to come here then and be a guest of the club and pull the winner of our rising cake vacation drawing yeah. and maybe it will be someone in the club again I don't know but I, I can't thank you guys enough for everybody stepping up and you know we, we couldn't do a whole lot this year with the with the festival but everybody really did their part and so far we are up to, we are over twenty two thousand dollars twenty two six twenty. We, can get there. we have another week, so let's just like everybody you think oh, maybe I, I kind of forgot to ask them. Uh, it's almost over. It's almost over. Let's go ahead and ask them. Let's get the last few bucks, squeeze it out because we're giving it away. So thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. And I have more tickets if you need them. <laughs> uh, and that's being shared online too. If you're on Facebook, um, please share it. Uh, the link goes to the website and then they can do donating and, and do all that stuff through there too. Also on the treasury part, if you noticed on the latest bill that was emailed this week, uh, in the body of the email is the link to be able to pay online. You still gotta know your balance. Uh, click on the body of the email, know your balance, type it all in. It looks like you have to have your email and your all that stuff, but you can pay your bill online very easily. It didn't allow you to click on anything. In the body of the email, not yeah. when you not when you double click on the PDF. No, I know. Yeah. I'll show you. Okay. Yeah. That, well, it worked for me, so um, not really sure. Yes. What about that uh, thirty dollars worth of? I believe we do get charged twice for friends of the foundation, two times thirty dollars. So it's correct. It's correct. So here's the email. Just there's so everyone's looking at it. There. This is the link. It's in the body of the email. It says this is what I owed for the month. This link right here, if I just tap on it, it takes me to Square and allows me to check out. It says pay balance, and I go right from there. That email that you pulled up was that from the um, Matthews guy? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That was this. It just went out this week, so it's not from previous ones. Um, it took a lot of hard work and effort to try to figure out how to do this, and we finally figured it out. You still can bring in a check. I'm here. You still can send in a check. I go to the post office. And if you have cash for any of your fines that will be coming up or happy dollars, I'll take cash here today, too. That's all I got. That means there's no excuses not to pay. Absolutely nothing. Thank you. Hey, order, 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 order. Hey, guys, let's go. We got a meeting going on. Uh, got a couple of more things going on right now. And first, I want to get to talking about the results of the club survey. But before we do, I get these these packages every now and then, and they come from the Rotary Foundation. And this one came with four pins in it today, and I couldn't believe my eyes. So I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to do a presentation with four pins today? Are these people even going to be here? What are the chances I'm going to have all four people on this list here today? Right? What are the chances? All four people are here today. Unbelievable, right? So if we could, I'm going to recognize these people in ascending order of, of Paul Harris uh, status level. Um, if we could please give a round of applause to our Paul Harris uh, plus two designee, Mr. George Panopoulos. George, congratulations. We have two people in our club who have just reached Paul Harris designation number three. So Paul Harris plus three. I just did a two sign. I know I did. That was three. Thank you. I saw you, Mike. <laughs> so Paul Harris plus three. Mr. Roger Smith, congratulations. Also to Nanette Sola. Congratulations, Roger. Congratulations, Nanette. Nanette Sola. And last. But of course, not least today, we have somebody who has just gone up to level Paul Harris plus seven. That is two rubies on there. Congratulations to Eileen Higginbotham. I'm 
you know, in the end, this is kind of why we do what we do for a big organization like Rotary and not just for ourselves is raising money for the Rotary Foundation. So congratulations to you guys who have continued to show your uh, appreciation and contributions to, uh, to Rotary Foundation. Nice job, guys. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, last in the club business and announcements and before uh, we have our fine master uh, to talk about the results of the survey. And thank you, guys. We had 33 respondents to the survey. So... Um, it's a pretty decent swath of our club, nearly half of you, enough to get a taste, enough to, to look at this and not take it with a gigantic grain of salt. But I encourage you still to. And what I wanted to do was take you through the data, because who likes responding to a survey and not knowing what the results of it were, right? So um, what I want to do is at least go over the data that I saw. But I don't think uh, so. First of all, and everyone who took time to write comments as well, thank you. I read every single word. I have poured over and parsed every single thing that you all have said. Please know that I take every word to heart, and I'll talk about that in, uh, in just a second. But uh, let me share my screen so that people at home can see just one moment. Share for text and images. This screen. So, uh, Alan Gabe, can you give me a high sign if you could see my screen? Yeah. Thank you, Alan. You can't, I can't say. Can't. Okay, cool. I thought you said can't. So, uh, first question was, how satisfied are you with membership at our Rotary Club? And can I trust you guys here can see this as well? I know people at home can. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. Uh, so, how satisfied are you? Well, we have 61% of the club. And if you want to count both of these, we have uh, nearly 80% of the club saying that they're very satisfied with things. So, that's good. Overall, we are, we are generally satisfied. But there are, and we recognize members of our club who, who wish for us to do a little bit better in this category. So I recognize that there's not just one person who, who was in the disagree category of, uh, or uh, dissatisfied category. Um, the second question was, uh, the members of our club clear, clearly care about one another. Roger Smith has a question. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. 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 What I'm trying to do is also talk to the people at home who can only hear me through this mic. So um, I think everyone can see. No, I'm not doing this right here. Sorry, Roger. I'll, I'll, I'll say this and step away. Is that all right? So uh, uh, members of our club clearly care about one another. This one to me should be a layup, right? Like I would hate to see anything in the disagree category for this. And just like we would expect, almost everybody says clearly the members of this club care about one another to one degree or another. And that makes me feel pretty good. Roger, you can see that. It's got a, a ascending order there. Sorry, I got the big big dome like a pit bull. Sorry about that. Um, our club has a culture that I'm proud to share with others. This one mirrors very interestingly the uh, satisfaction uh, question overall, I thought. So you can see that we still have some people who say down here that our, our club culture is not one that I am proud to share with others. And I mean, every one of us should think about that and, and feel that. Look, it's, surveys are, are surveys, but we should notice that there are people in our club, and these are probably the people up there who said that we're, we're not satisfied with the way things are going. And clearly, you could tell that there is some cultural aspect to that. Um, third question down. Go ahead, Terry. Is that one and one? That, that's correct, Terry. That's uh, one person said one, one person said two, three people said three. But if the vast majority, again, of, of the club. I got, I got trapped in this while I was looking at these numbers first, where I, where I, I ignored where I ignored this and just said, wait a second, what the heck's going on here, right? And, and I feel like I, that, that's our tendency because we think we're, we're perfect in, in every way. And, uh, you know, um, I, I just think that's maybe a human tendency, but I'm bringing you this information to show you where my head's at about this. Go ahead, Gil. So uh, my question is, it, and I have a hard time seeing the numbers at the bottom, is it 17 people that answered the survey on that question? So uh, thank you for asking that. I, I'm sorry, you can't see, so I'm gonna blow this up just a little bit more. Um, from each one of these. Is that any better, everyone? Can you see that a little bit better? So our club culture uh, is a um, club has a culture of proud to share with others. 34 responses, uh, 19 of them said five, 10 uh, people said four. So, uh, you know, 29 of the 34 uh, respondents said, yes, I'm, I'm very happy with it. But um, does that answer it, Gil? Yeah, I just couldn't see the number. Sorry, yeah, hopefully this will be a little bit better. Um, the, the next two, I thought, uh, were uh, really interesting to me. The amount of fundraising the club expects me to engage in is appropriate. I want to ask you to ask yourself, what would be the right response to this? What we, if, if we could design it as a club, because we, we want to, we, we don't want to overtax our members, but we don't want to under uh, uh, take as well. We want to be at, at a nice equilibrium of, of what we do. And I think that this represents some state of that equilibrium where not everyone's 
incredibly happy about it. I think if we said uh, if everyone was in the appropriate category, we might be able to afford to, to uh, fundraise just a bit more, but that's my own personal feelings about it. So 34 responses to this, you can see it's just a little bit flatter and uh, a lot of people are in this category of uh, maybe they, maybe we, it is appropriate, maybe it's not appropriate. Um, but the club service projects are meaningful to me. Yeah, and I can tell it just went off. I don't care for you. Um, our club service projects are meaningful to me. This one, in some way, to me, also mirrors the two that we've seen that are heavy on on, uh, on one side and really light sort of trailing towards the other. Where uh, some people say that we're we're not doing service projects that are meaningful to me, but the vast majority, uh, two thirds of our club says yes, it absolutely is. Um, next two number of community service projects our club engages in, and number of scholarships that we offer. And both of these are really about the same um, uh, answers. And I brought, uh, I brought this up because everyone has seen this before. It's a curve of normal distribution, right? Um, and what I am getting at, I guess, and every, I'm not going to down to everyone, you, you know statistics, but it, it appears that this is normally distributed, uh, it, it generally normally distributed with most people saying being in that fat part of the middle of the curve, that, curve, that sort of 68.4 or whatever it is percent within one standard deviation uh, between both of these saying that we're just about in the right spot. But I do think, and um, I'll mention this down about the comments that, you know, we do have a lot of people who say we do too few projects. We yeah. also do have a lot of people who say we do too many. That's not, it, it's it, enough to say it's a plurality of, of people. It's not just one or two, but um, I felt this when reading the comments and I'll mention this a little bit that I, I you know, the toy uh, stretch Armstrong, you know, its arms just keep getting bigger and bigger and, and further apart. It, you know, if you read the comments and if you see this, you get the tendency to get pulled one way and then get pulled just as hard, just as far uh, the other way. It's pretty incredible the, the, uh, the way we break down as a club. But the, the sort of meaty part of the curve uh, being in the just right category to me that says that I think that the number of scholarships that we offer, a number of community service projects that we engage in are generally right. Um, that's at least what I take away from the data. I understand there's people in this room who are in that too little category or the too much category. Uh, that's that's what I take away from it. Um, club meetings are worth my time. Uh, 34 responses to this. 19 said uh, they are worth my time, but uh, five people, so five respondents to this, uh, about a sixth of the respondents said that they basically don't feel that club meetings are worth uh, their time, or at least that's how I extrapolate it. Or we could be doing more to make club meetings worth people's time. Um, I, I hear that, and that means, Wes, go look at the comments and see what people are talking about. That's exactly what I did and I've done. I don't feel it's, uh, uh, what would be the word fair to share comments so they don't want it to clearly call anyone out but at least the data anonymized as a whole i think is, is really fair to share uh last two questions uh compared to how it was before COVID, attending weekly club meetings is for you personally easier harder or about the same uh solid 50 percent said it's about the same but surprising to me uh about a third of the club said it's harder for them now and I added the words in there for you personally for a reason, because I, I guess I felt like we're we're making it easier through this thing and through, you know, trying to make the club easier to visit. But um, I guess hearing that 30 percent of people are it's harder for them to come. That does jive maybe with what we're seeing on a week to week basis with attendance. And I, and I guess I get that. And that's one of those things that I guess you just got to take with what we're doing right now. Last question. Um, our club is taking reasonable precautions to keep its members safe from coronavirus. I was really happy to see this because this is one that I took seriously and seeing none in the, the zero categories, even those who are unsatisfied with our club. Because uh, I went back to look at those individual responses still gave us uh, good marks in this department. And that's something that is incredibly important to me. And I have to say thank you to the people in the room who continue to make this a safe place to come on a weekly basis. Um, I appreciate you and it's what helps us sustain this thing and keep it going. So thanks. Does anyone have any questions about what you saw so far up here? Um, I, I talked about it being sort of uh, pulling uh, to one direction or the other. And so just some of the comments that I got were for every one of these, you know, we need to show more attention to the community right now. There was another comment saying we do way too much as a club. We're spread too thin. There are some people who say we have great value as a club and some people who say we are 
not providing value to our members and we could be doing X, Y, and Z. There are people who say we have a fabulous diversity of age and opinion in this club, and there's those who say that we don't. So for every opinion that was that was levied, there was uh, an equal and opposite one. So go ahead, Glenn. I think the biggest concern would be that we have, you know, only 34 people answered. It was online and only 34 people answered. So I think as a president, you have to figure out why the other ones didn't answer. That's less than 50% of the club. Didn't even feel it take the time while it was online. They didn't have to go anywhere. They just had to answer an email. I mean, we can look at all the other statistics, mm. but I think that's the number one. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, Thank you. Brian. I'm wondering again, statistically, like I said, is how valid it is. And I, I apologize because I did not respond. Oh. I, it got lost in the shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> and I got lost I'm in the shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poisoning the dead. If we were to uh, resend it to those of us that were errant or responding and get more people to complete it, how much it'll change the statistical relevance of what you have and would you be willing to let us still respond? Certainly, I'd be willing to, to keep this open. Yeah, uh, wh why not? Find that email and the, mm -hmm. uh, I, I had considered sending a, a reminder email, and I, I just I felt like I'd been bombarding <laughs> this week. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. but I, I think we could get more people to respond. Definitely. Excellent. Go ahead, Roger Smith. Uh, Should you have it sent from Alan Deep to sort of an implied threat behind it? <laughs> Actually, I think that's a really wonderful <laughs> idea, and I saw it. <laughs> Alan's ears perked up as soon as that happened, too. I saw. Go ahead, Terry. It'll go Terry then Vince. This is, this is a cross section. That is at this point in time. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that what you're taking from this is absolutely correct. It is it's just your interpretation of what mm -hmm. they're saying. So I wouldn't make major changes based on mm -hmm. surveys and less than half. Yeah. If you're saying this is going to make a difference in how we proceed in the future, I think you'd get a, a, a greater turnout. Yeah. To me, this was just an exercise in interest. Yeah. And uh, I didn't see that it's an earth shaking. Thing. No, I, I, uh, so, so that means you didn't fill it out. I did not. Okay. All right. So, uh, I, what, what could I have said to you that would have made it um, more important? This is a direction that is very important to the club, and we will be taking a look at it for the future uh, that we'll be moving into the next year. And now, all of a sudden, now it's got some importance and relevance. Right now, I, I thought this was just an exercise uh, in uh, an interest. Okay. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna make policy decisions based on this, it's a whole different ballgame. Uh, let me just address that first, and then I'll go Vince and then Pat. So I um, everything I do and everything I, I send out, I, I I try and I said this in the beginning of the year that I think it's one of my most important jobs is to make best use of everyone here's time and make sure that I'm not wasting it in any way, shape or form. I take that part of my responsibility really seriously that I wouldn't send you something at all. If it wasn't like you, you, you got to do this, you got to read it. Or if it wasn't something that wasn't important to the club. So I would encourage you, if you do get something from me, I, I'm not RI that bombards you on a weekly basis with things that aren't, I, I would hope that if you get something from me in the future, you do uh, notice that I, run a company and I also run the club and it takes a lot of time out of my week to, to do this and that if I've spent some time on it at all, um, please recognize that it comes with uh, a, a bit of weight from me. Um, go ahead, Vince. Uh, I just heard a comment coming back from the Gerson where they didn't see the survey, so I was going to suggest that you send it out again. But it sounds like that's one, one thing real quick. We'll go to Pat to see you, Pat. Uh, it was sent out in the afternoon on Wednesday, and I'm hearing an echo. Um, so I can understand if you didn't do it right away. There was a couple of comments that was, um, uh, in, in, uh, we, we did something immediately. One of the comments was, we'd like to know who the speaker is next week. So every Wednesday, you will get an email. It will tell us who the speaker is next week, and it'll have links to all of uh, being able to pay your, your stuff. And I have it in my schedule to send that every Wednesday. So please look at your emails every Wednesday. Did I mention that I'll be sending it on a Wednesday and that you should look for your email on a Wednesday? And we'll go from there. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. Uh, Tom's going to let you know why every week you need to go. Oh, we're going to go. Uh, I'm going to go Pat and then Annette. Give me one second, Annette. Uh, and Pat, give me one second before you. Sorry. 
and my comment really mirrors some of the others. Um, I did not fill it out. Um, I don't think that that's a lack of interest in the club or the future of the club. Um, but I had been bombarded by email related to the ACE grant. And so I gave myself 24 hours off. And when I saw the results come by, I decided I wouldn't muddy the water by answering after that. So, you know, I don't, I don't think the 30, I think the 34 respondents in, you know, 48 hours is rather a mark of high interest in the club, not anything that says that there's a lack of interest in the club. I'll agree with you, Pat, that uh, 34 respondents to any email trying to get people to open it is is pretty good. So I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Um, and to what Eileen said, I'm going to leave this open and I'm going to send out a reminder again just to see if we can get more engagement. Please don't fill it out twice so the uh, data gets uh, poisoned. I'd really appreciate that because I can't check uh, for, for that, especially if you fill it out uh, twice. So please don't do that part of it. I had one question. Oh, it wasn't a question. It was simply a statement that generally when you send out a survey, a 10% response is amazing. And But the other thing is, we do get a lot of emails, but we get very few emails from Wes. So when I see something from Wes, I tend to open it because I think it's probably important for this week. Um, just saying, I mean, you might get a lot from me, but once in a while, we get one from Wes. Uh, thank you for saying that, Eileen. I really appreciate it. All right. So I am. What's going on? Looking for, uh, I think we have our fine master, Alan Gabe here. And Alan, sorry for such a poor lead in to you, but if you're ready for us, I was hoping you might uh, lead us today in some fine mastering. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alan Gabe. Well, Wes, you know, whenever you do something like that, it gives me a lot more fodder for the fine. So it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, before I go any further, I that person the responses to this week's question. Hello. Go, go, Hello. Ahead, Alan. Sorry. go ahead, Alan. Sorry. Did, did you hear what I just said? Okay. We're going to do this. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yes, can everyone can, can hear you, Alan. Me? Okay. Everyone can hear you. Did you hear what I said about um, I don't mind you? doing what you did because it gives me more fodder i find yes yes okay. thank you Aaron. <laughs> did you hear uh that i asked who's doing the buzz today i know bruce is not and gene's not because i can see them so who is there are no hands being raised in in this room but i also don't see everyone there's a chance it's rosemary Jean. she's not she's not on the screen um so uh what i can tell you is that in lieu of the buzz we have a catch-all called the record button and that is uh meeting is being recorded and just like every week we're going to be uploaded to youtube uh so yeah that that doesn't count so gene's going to pick it up because that's the way gene is thanks gene <laughs> oh um uh pat Grunold is going to have a pass on all fines today because um, i needed a favor and she jumped right into it without any hesitation i appreciate that also, if you're wearing the same rotary attire that I am wearing today, that's the black Hoffman Estates, excuse me, Schaumburg Hoffman Estates rotary uh, golf. Unless you didn't pay any tickets in for the vacation drawing. So, um, as I said in the email I sent out, um, if you did not turn any vacation raffle drawing tickets through today uh, and we have a list we know who you are that's going to be a five dollar fine um if you did not reach out to a fellow club member this past week who for a non-rotary matter that's going to be a three dollar fine if you have not reached out to in the past 10 days that's a two dollar fine if you are not wearing rotary attire, that's $2. Now, remember, we're keeping track of all of this. Um, Rhonda, it's nice seeing you again. We've missed you. Um, I'm surprised you didn't give happy dollars for being back 
So I'm going to let you decide how much you want to contribute to the club um, for the pleasure of coming back today. What do you think? How much? Uh, you, you, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Rhonda, I think you unmuted yourself, but your mic wasn't working. It's all right. Hold, 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 okay, the, so hold the number of fingers up. We can see you. <laughs> if you Whoa, $20. 20. Okay. Now that's pretty good. You, that's pretty good. Thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> Truth be told, that's more than I would have fined you, but thank you very much. George said he thought that was 10 times 10. We'll just send you the bill for 100. Is that all right, Rhonda? Thank you. All right. Glad we got that straight. Um, if you did not respond to the rotary question today, that would be $2. If you leave early today and you did not buy a scooter button, that will be $3. If you have not brought a guest to a meeting in the past this rotary year, since Wes has taken the reins, that'll be $2. And um, I also have some other things. Ted is very optimistic because on his screen, he has the Wrigley Field the Chicago Cubs marquee. Unfortunately, it shows the Cleveland Indians when they played for the World Series. Let's hope they do better today. Um, and maybe Rizzo, Baez, and um, Chris Bryant can get a hit for a change. So I'm going to charge you $3 because they can't hit, so I'll hit you up $1 for each of them. Um, if you're a White Sox fan, I'm really sorry. I was pulling for you. Um, that'll be $2. I should talk. I'm a Tiger fan, and they didn't even make the playoffs. Worse yet, the Lions haven't won a football a playoff game in 52 years. Speaking of football, Jody... Your very your picture is very dark. It's hard to see you, but I'm surprised you didn't make happy dollars for the Packers being three and zero. What happened? You're not proud of your team anymore. Jody? I'm very proud. I gave I gave happy dollars last week for that. Yeah, well, that last week was last yeah. week. So since they've won three games, why don't you pay three dollars? Um, Gladly. If if you um. Tom, I'm confused. When are you going to send out your emails? Is it going to be on Wednesday? I wish you were more clear on it. You pay $2 for that. Um, if you did not respond if you did not respond to the survey, and a lot of people came through and said they did not respond, that'll be $2. Now I want to go to the question. Um, the questions really bring insight to the people in our club. And it's very interesting. Because of it, I'm going to have a quiz. But first, I'm going to give some of my favorite uh, responses to the questions. I always love Ted Gross's responses. Uh, they're very, they're always very thoughtful and insightful. Um, and I want to thank Ted not only for such great response, but for um, being the first one to respond this year, this week. Mary Jane, I thought was very interesting. You know, obviously she can't keep a job. Do we do we have a Mary Jane? Jobs. Do we have a Mary Jane in our club? Mary Jane. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, Wes. So since you interrupted me, you can pay two dollars. <laughs> uh, I love Bruce Dockey's response. He said, "I have the job I have because I was very young. My mom told me that I should be a lawyer." <laughs> Man, listening to his mother. Um, <laughs> Ed Haig, I, I liked Ed's response. He did that because he had his identity stolen and he wanted to help people who had it. Nancy, I love you. This is one of my favorites, and I will read it verbatim. I had the job I did to support my husband and keep close tabs on the money. And all <laughs> so that'll be two dollars, Nancy. <laughs> Vince, is, uh, Vince had a very interesting response about being in the Navy, working for Motorola, being in business for 42 years, so that'll be a couple bucks. Uh, Wes's uncle Jim did not disappoint. Here's what Jim Fabrini Never. said. Never. I was born into the family that decided to open up a, floor, a flower slash gift shop. I wish they would have opened a bank instead. <laughs> We'll see, Jim, but if he's there, that'll be $2. <laughs> he's amused. I can't tell he's wearing a mask, but he appears amused. Bill, I, I was very moved by Bill Kelly's response. Uh, first of all, Bill was the last one to respond, so that's $2, Bill. But his response was two moments. Being riveted as I watched Kill a Mockingbird when I was eight years old, 
At around the same time frame, watching my father with awe from the makeshift courtroom gallery when he served as village pro prosecutor for village of Hoffman Estates. Ever since that time, I wanted to become an attorney and practice law. I thought that was very moving. But what I want to do today is, if I mentioned your name during these answers, you have to pay a $2 fine. I'm going to have a quiz today. How well do you know your fellow Rotarian? One of the people in the response said that they wanted to be an FBI agent. I'm going to give you five names. And then after you all decide who you're going to think said they always had previously wanted to be an FBI agent. The five people are Ed Haig, Jody Benjamin, Steve Lamb, Gene Schlinkman, and Vince Sanisardo. So give a minute to sink in. Ed Haig, Jody Benjamin, Steve Lamp, Gene Schlinkman, and Vince Sanisardo. If you thought it was everybody ready to answer? Yes. yes. Okay, I want to see hands in the club meeting, Wes. Anybody who thought it was Vince Sanisardo, raise your hand. Okay, you all can pay $2. Oh. Everybody who thought it was Steve Lamp, raise your hand. I can't see him, but that'll be $2. Everybody think that it was Gene Schlinkman, raise your hand. They're raising that'll be $2. Wow. Even Gene Schlinkman raised her hand. She's confused. <laughs> well, and I won't even tell a, bl a blind joke, Gene. If you thought it was Ed Haig, raise your hand. We got two hands. If you two thought hands. it was Jody Benjamin, raise your hand. You are two absolutely hands. right. It was Jody Benjamin. Wow, Jody who Benjamin. wanted to be an FBI agent. Claire oh. Stalling. Yes. <laughs> so instead, she became a Green Bay Packer fan. <laughs> so if you're not wearing a pin, that's $2. If you were late, Excuse me, that'll be $2. And if you have not paid a fine today, I'm very, very surprised. So why, what the heck, throw in $2. Thank you very much, everybody be safe and healthy. Wear your masks. Thank Rest you, Alan. All yours. <laughs> Thank you, Alan, I appreciate it. I'm gonna have to go ahead and second what Alan said about wearing masks. It's very important to have mine right here, of course. Uh, I'm going to invite up today our speaker, who is, of course, one of our very own, here to talk to us about uh, the End Polio Now program and World Polio Day, which is coming up this very month, everyone. Put your hands together for Mr. Glenn Garland. And you can see everyone's smiling face right there. You don't need to see everyone right there. There's your camera. Well, I, have to I, had, I had, had a great break for the slide presentation, but our, our, our fine map is a little long winded, so I'm going to cut that out. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell you a couple of stories and how they intertwine. Now, I am. Sorry, I'm going to. I need to hear right here. Yeah, let's hear you go. Go ahead. Okay, good. Oh, and also, Rhonda, we all love you in this room, and we know you're a member. So, um, thank you, Glenn. I could speak to you now. So, thank you. <laughs> we've had polio and polio now people for in our district forever. Um, it is the number one number one cause in uh, in Rotary International to eradicate polio. Uh, on my birthday, it was nice that they announced August twenty fifth that Africa was polio free of um, the uh, polio wild virus. But it is a very crippling disease when when you do get it, and um, I just want you to listen to these stories. In 1994, Bill Gates Sr., who was 69 at the time, was going to the movies with his son and his daughter-in-law. So they're standing in line waiting for a ticket. While they're standing in line, Bill Gates Jr., because he is a junior, was complaining to his father. He says, Dad, I am getting inundated with messages and letters about giving money away. Can you help me out? Now, 
Bill Gates Sr., who was 59 at the time, had an incredibly successful law practice, looked at his son and said, sure, I'll come by the office on Monday. I'll take a look at the messages and the, and the, and the uh, letters that you have acquired. Okay. Fast forward now to 2006. This was the year before our own Mr. Erickson was president. I'm sorry, governor. Um, Dave Waring was the governor of, of the district. Okay, they were having the convention at the Lincolnshire Marriott. Dave Waring, this is the story that I was told, so maybe he had a couple of beers on him. <laughs> but uh, Dave said that he invited Bill Gates Sr. He wanted him to be there. He also invited the president of Rodeo, but he couldn't make it. The president couldn't make it, so instead, um, they sent the, I'm sorry? Luis G.I. Luis G.I. came, yes. He was found, they, right, right. Luis G.I. came. Now, Dave strategically set the tables so that Jack Blaine, incredible Rotarian, uh, a champion for polio, was sitting to the left of Mr. Bill Gates Sr. And Terry Miller, who is in the Dawnbreakers Club up in Crystal Lake, was sitting on the other side of Mr. Gates. GI was sitting at another table altogether. During the course of the uh, event, Jack, no surprise, talked about polio. Terry, no surprise, talked about polio to Gates Sr. The following day, Bill Gates Sr. had a breakfast with GI. Now, Bill Gates Sr. went into that breakfast and he wanted the Rotarians, who he knew could raise millions of dollars because we had done that years prior, he knew we could mobilize. He wanted us to take care of potable water. He wanted us, he said, water is interesting. At the end of the meeting, and the phrase that was, uh, I was told was said most in the meeting by Bill Gates Sr. is, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. At the end of the meeting, Bill Gates Sr. said, the foundation is 100% behind the eradication of polio. So we take those two stories, and I think there's not a coincidence that that happened. It's not a coincidence because let's say Bill Gates Sr. would have told Junior, forget about it. I want to go fishing. I'm 69 years old. I'm retired. I'm out of here. We would have never gotten Junior to come to this event, never. And the entire course would have been different, much more difficult. But because those events happened, we have done tremendous work in, in the world in eradicating polio. So this year, Ellen Young and I have put our heads together. And uh, if anyone knows Ellen, they know that if you get on a committee with her, you're probably going to get, um, I don't know, 10 or 12 emails a day, maybe a couple phone calls. They all start with, are you busy? Sorry, I'm interrupting you. Um, but we thought that we would honor Mr. Jack Blaine, who has given, well, over a million dollars towards the eradication of polio. He still gives, after his death, $100,000 for the next uh, three or four years. So our theme is be like Jack. Now, what does that mean? Jack took it personal. Um, Terry Miller took it personal. After that meeting, Bill Gates Sr. took it personal. So we want all of you to take it personal. So I got my calculator out, and I figured, okay, what do we want to hit with Jack Blaine's money that he's going to give this year of $100,000? We want to hit $250,000 because the math says if you hit $250,000, you divide that by three. That's the number of children we will have given the vaccine to because it takes $3. It's 50 cents of a vaccine. It's times six. And that includes all the logistics and includes the vaccine and everything else included in it. So to hit that, what I'm asking, and the clubs, and, and this club specifically, does great work 
uh, with giving to uh, N Polio Now Foundation. That's, that's wonderful. But we really want you to make it personal. We want you to go online, get on my rotary, see what your footprint is. Now, I was doing this all along, and uh, Ellen then said, Glenn, what's your footprint? And I said, well, Ellen, I'm very proud. I just became a major donor. She said, but what's your polio footprint? I said, um, Ellen, I'm having a problem with my other computer, and so I'm not really sure. She says, well, I see your, fo your, your footprint, Glenn. It's zero. I said, oh, that's not good. She said, well, you can't go in front of the clubs and ask for money if you don't have a footprint. I said, wow, OK. So my wife and I donated some money so that I have a footprint. If you see my wife, you can tell her we donated some money, too. <laughs> uh, so now I have a, a, a footprint. Uh, my footprint right now is 1,000 children. And hopefully by the end of the year, we can double that. What we're asking every Rotarian from now for six months is $12.50 a month. That's it. Just $12.50 a month. So it comes out to $75. With that we will accomplish our goal. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't add this. I understand the times are tough on a lot of people. I understand this firsthand because my business is down at least 60%. So if it's not possible to do this, that's okay. This is not one of those, you've got to do this or that, or you know, we're going to find you. No, that's okay. We just want you to make it personal. We want you to think about it. We want you to think about the children that will be vaccinated. We want you to think about the volunteers. And I think this is this is what really hit me when I was doing all my research. You know, when we have a service project, people will raise their hand and, okay, we're going to go, we're going to go. And you get 20 people that raise their hand, and you get four people that show up. In Pakistan and Afghanistan, these people go out and they give the vaccine to children and they know that the Taliban wants to kill them because some of their fellow volunteers have been killed. Now, when I pick up trash alongside the road, or when I'm with Chris at the barn, nobody's trying to kill me. That's an easy volunteer. I don't know if I could volunteer if I knew someone was going to kill me. But they go out time after time because they know how important it is because it's personal to them. It's real personal to them. These are their family members. These are their friends, children, and you've got to make it personal. So the last two things I just want to talk about, because I found this really fascinating. Johnny Weismiller. How many know who Johnny Weismiller was? Great. Come on, Chris. No? Johnny Weismiller. Okay. Johnny Weismiller. Is he your cousin? Is he really? Outstanding. Outstanding. You could not follow in his footsteps, though. I'm just going to tell you. Because at the age of at the age of nine, Johnny Weismiller contracted polio. And so his mother asked the doctor, what can we do so that little Johnny can get better? The doctor said, teach him how to swim. Five gold medals in the Olympics. Okay. How many know who David Sanborn is? Saxophone player. Outstanding in that. Outstanding. He's a great saxophone player. Jazz. If you like jazz. Pick up some of his music. Um, you know, if you go on iTunes, I don't know. I don't go on iTunes. I actually buy a, a record. But it's great saxophonist. He contracted it at the age of three. He was actually in an iron lung for a year and another two years in bed rest. His mother asked the doctor, what can we do for him? Doctor said, I think he should take up a wind instrument to help his lungs, to help him breathe. He's an Emmy-winning saxophonist now. So who's going to be the next Johnny Weismiller in Pakistan or Afghanistan? Who's going to be the next David Sanborn coming out of Afghanistan or Pakistan? We can help them if we take it personal. That's it. Thanks. Thank you <laughs> questions. Questions. Sure. We can do questions. Whoops. All right. Go ahead. If I wanted to donate $75 right now, how would I go about doing that too? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, 
Chris will be collecting it for us late. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, you go on my rotary and you hit the little button on the uh, right, actually Rotary International website. And on the right hand side, there's a button that says donate. You hit that button and you follow it all the way down to there are six event, there's six areas you can donate to. Polio is one of them. You have to make sure you do polio. Now, if a club member wants to donate through the club, the club president or the club secretary has to fill out two forms, one donation for the club, one donation for the individual, so that everybody gets points. That's really what you have to do. That way you can track your footprint. Yes, sir. Uh, is, is the Gates Foundation still matching dollar for dollar, or how are they, uh, you said they're behind it, but how are they behind it? Can you, can you repeat the question, please, Nicole? Is the Gates Foundation matching dollar for dollar? The Gates Foundation, so you didn't think I had this here. I've got it in my notes here. Gates Foundation has, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a two for one. They've donated $3.7 billion as of 2018. So it's a couple bucks more now. Yes, I'm sorry, wait, yes. Um, Glenn, thank you very much for talking about polio. Um, as many of you know, my mother had polio in the late 40s and early 50s, so it is personal to me um, to eradicate polio. However, none of us have an unlimited bucket of money, you know, right. especially during these times. That's right. Um, I think I, I, and I, maybe I speak for others, would rather give my little bucket of money locally because I feel that my local needs are really pressing and personal to me as well. And when I hear that the Gates Foundation made, what did you say, $2.1 billion? 3.7. $3.7 billion. Um, tell me why, or, or help me understand why I should give to polio and I feel like my money should go locally instead. I'm glad you asked that question. I had this question posed to me on Wednesday. I was at the Carpenter Bills Rotary Club. It's a breakfast, seven o'clock, you have to get there kind of early. But they asked me that. They said, why should we give money to Rotary when I'd rather give money to people here? And the only thing I can tell you is because you have decided to join an organization where the number one goal, number one goal throughout the world is the eradication of polio. That's what our organization has done. Now, we're also an organization that has, that has, has conquered hurting cats, as I like to say, because I believe Rotary is the greatest organization in the world, now for profit, because we're bottom up. We don't have to listen to RI. We don't have to listen to the district. But I would hope that people, that's why I broke it down to $12.50. I would hope that someone would say, you know what, the organization that I belong to, this is their number one goal. And we're very close. But if you choose not to, that's going to be okay too. Yes, sir. I just want to. I just want to say that real quickly, if we don't complete the job, it will most likely come back, spread throughout the world. What, but look at what our pandemic we have now. Polio would be many times worse than that. If we don't finish it off now, we could be in much, much, much worse shape 10, 15, 20 years from now, even in this country. We got it down to two countries that can't live outside the human body for more than a couple weeks. We can put it away. What countries is it uh, currently in? Afghanistan and Pakistan. However, there are other countries where the polio virus is there, but it's not the wild virus. I just want to make that clear. You know, when they say that Africa has been eradicated from polio, what they mean is they've been, it's been eradicated from the wild virus. The vaccine virus is, is still around. So everyone knows we're a couple minutes over, just so everyone knows, as long as everyone's okay with that. What does that mean? It's a virus that's contracted by the vaccine itself. A small percentage of people who get the vaccine will get polio. A very small percentage. In fact, now more people get it from the vaccine than the wild wild polio virus. Right. So once we have the wild virus gone, no more vaccines, that'll be totally gone. 
Sorry. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. I was just wondering if it's preferable to pay. I mean, which is the better way to go? Pay the club and the club puts it on or to pay directly? In my opinion, it's better for you to pay directly because it, it okay. gives you a footprint. Okay. If you get credit, the club gets credit. Right. So you, and we don't have to do paperwork. Okay. Yes. For you people online, I'm trying to do my best of getting all of everyone's comments. It's kind of crazy. I just want to know how we answer people who say, I'm up to here with the polio. We've been hearing for 20 years. We're this close. And I hear that all the time that, you know, they're still plugging along. So how would you answer those people? I haven't had that question before. Oh. No, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it's a good one, though. No, yeah. no, no. I can, I'll answer you now. Yeah. Again, and I think it's the same answer I just gave. Yes, you are in you are in an organization. This is their number one charge. And, you know, this is a disease that um, yeah, it's going to take a long time. But when you look at all the variables, I mean, let's just say there's no Taliban. Let's just say everybody's happy in the world. It would have been eradicated by now. But when you get a volunteer. Let's say we're going to we're going to clean the streets and they give you a bucket and they say, but Nancy, watch out for those snipers. You know, I mean, so there's a lot of variables that are involved in not in having it elongated like this. So, Let us stay well, thank you. Thank you, Glenn Garland. Fabulous, fabulous job, Glenn Garland. We really appreciate you talking to us about this today. Can I ask everyone to please rise? And if we could have uh, Glenn Shergout, would you please uh, lead us in the four way test of the things we think, say, and do? Sure. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Please let your actions this week show everyone that Rotary opens opportunities. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you guys for joining us for a great meeting today. We appreciate you. Hi, Gene. Hi, Jody. Thanks, Wes. Hey, Dad. Good Hope you're meeting. feeling better, bud. I miss you, Pops. All right, I'm going to end the meeting. Thanks for coming, everyone.